Hello, world, and welcome to the Innovation Coaching Podcast. My name is Klaus Rostel, and with me today, I have Matthias Grimme. Matthias, tell me how I can help. First of all, Klaus, thank you so much for having me on your show slash podcast. And um, I'm really happy that we can talk because um, I've been working on a like side project, a small one, uh, since... I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to say, but since maybe like five years or something, so it's already like a long time. <laughs> we met each other basically at the beginning of the project. Uh, uh, it was maybe 2019 we saw each other or we met each other the first time. Yes. And you are like the perfect match for this. So like you have experience with telling tales and stories. Uh, you have a track record uh, in innovation. And um, I know you have been publishing quite a lot of books, which is also perfect. And you know how to scale things. <laughs> and uh, that's basically the four ingredients uh, I would need. And yeah, I came here today because I wanted to kind of explore with you how like what possible path for growth and scale I don't necessarily want to earn money with this project, but rather reach more people mm. and enable them through this project to telling tales. Okay, I like that so far. And thank you for the beautiful introduction. Uh, very humbling. Tell me a bit more. Let's let's put a bit more detail on it. Okay. Uh, so I lived a normal life. I had a, a daughter. She was probably like three and a half or four years old. And um, I, I worked quite a lot. And um, every time I came home, uh, I was having a bit of time with my daughter. And I, like in the evening, I read her like a book, mm -hmm. probably some pictures in it. And then I had this moment of truth where I was in a conversation and somebody told me like, yeah, I don't know, these, uh, these picture books, they are like, uh, like watching television, but 1.0. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the children, they don't have to ex like uh, imagine anything, you know, everything is like prefabricated for them. And I was like, yeah, man, that's true. So I started telling tales to my daughter that evening. You know, I started and I invented uh, like three little dwarfs and they live nearby your place. So far up in the north <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, in the woods. And from there on, it kind of got out of hands. Uh, I, I started telling stories almost every evening and I started writing down summaries yeah, of these so I don't forget them. I realized that it is very difficult to come up with new, interesting kind of little stories and uh, like to get in all of these details and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I wrote down, wrote down all of these summaries and then I created like a website and did a, a newsletter and send out these little summaries to other parents because I, I, I figured maybe like some other people want to tell their children as well, especially, and that's, that's the most important part, uh, telling stories to children is like like it's it's like finding the holy grail having something to do with it with your children it's so magical like how they listen like with open eyes and open mouth and they are so you know like you're telling stories with all your arms and your gestures and your mimic and everything and there's such a strong connection happening and it's forging something so unique obviously you're experiencing the story uh, yourself as well, like for the first time. And then you have something which only you two have together. It's like, it's, I mean, who am I telling this to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're telling stories for, 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 for a living. So yeah, I, I created this newsletter and there were like suddenly people all around in Germany writing to me and saying, yeah, my, my daughter is listening to these stories and it's so wonderful. And it's, such a great thing to have all of these inputs. And I did a Klaus Rastad style of thing. Uh, I wrote a summary uh, for 365 days. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I, so I, I had like a, a, like a bucket of 365 stories, oh, just of these little, three little dwarfs uh, in, uh, in the far up in the north. And um, they experience so many things, obviously, because you have to come up with stuff, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and they experience these things in like throughout the seasons and uh, they did magical journeys and but like very down to earth because my daughter was so so little so it was not fighting and stuff like that but rather helping out these animals and you get like a lot of different perspectives from the from the forest so it was there was it was really like a like a journey for me as well and then i thought you know it's all digital i want to kind of get it out into the real world yeah and so i asked a, a friend of mine who's a photographer and, and a typographer and we kind of designed the book together you know and uh, now it has all of these beautiful pictures from forests throughout the seasons and it has not 365 stories but i don't know like 180 nice uh, open the book up and uh, look at the respective months uh, where you're in and then you can have this little input yeah uh, which and then you can just like close the book put it aside and start telling a tale and for me it was something very new and i like the i like the idea and i really love like spending time on this project and on this idea and uh now this book is kind of almost ready tell me more uh, it's almost going to the to the printer <laughs> and um that's basically where I'm at. And then there, like, then there's like a big blank part of like, now there's this book, but, and of this vision, you know, and uh, the vision is that uh, you have all of these great authors uh, in the, in the world and uh, they're writing stories for like older children and stuff. And you have children's books, authors, but I, I would want to have uh, them come together uh, kind of and write these little summaries of storylines and tales, uh -huh. uh, maybe f even for their characters, which are already existing, um, but to for, for people who deal with children age three until 12 or even older. Like, I mean, if you want to go really vision, then you, it's even like uh, adults telling each other's tales Oh. Yeah, uh, coming together and like, I don't know, and having these evenings of telling each other uh, like these adventures and like to have this global movement of people like crafting new stories. Thanks for sharing that. With you. So there's a bit to unpack here. I think, first of all, that there are some people out there thinking, just as I am, that this guy deserves a Father of the Year award for every evening telling stories. And you couldn't see it because Matthias and I are on camera and you out there listening can't see us. But he's there's been a lot of arm movement here. It's a very engaged storyteller we're dealing with here. So I'm only imagining the happy face of that daughter. So let's unpack this for a moment. Which is one, wow, very, very cool. Two, I'm a terrible person, so I'm going to point out something ironic right from the beginning. And that is that you started by mentioning this friend who said, uh, uh, picture books are just television 1.0 and the kids don't have to do. There's like pictures. And then you proudly go from there, end up where you say, and now I'm doing a picture book with 180 stories with pictures from a somebody who's helping me. And it's beautiful. I'm thinking... Interesting. Did he hear what just happened there? <laughs> Should I tell him? But with that said, right, I, I love that. I, I both love the opening comment, but I also love how you started by saying, and I thought I need to have less picture books, and that's why I'm doing a book with pictures, right? I, I love that. <laughs> Super impressive. So I think my question is 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 to to kind of narrow this down, and I think that's the place to start is you're doing a book or you've done a book and the book is coming out, you need to find out what do you do with the book? How many, have you already decided how many you're going to print, for example? Mm, not. That's a no. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. Mm, that's a no. So you don't know how many books you're going to print. That's a very important decision. We'll talk about that. There's also, a, what does the book, what is it used for? Is it to go to bookstores? Does it to be picked up by parents to use with their kids? Do you send it to libraries? Is it something that is more of a, you don't buy it for yourself, but it's a gift for somebody who has kids? Or like, how is it supposed to be sold? Who is, who's going to buy it? Or is it going to be given away? Do you give it to schools? Do you give it to children? Like, 
there is a book. Yes, we have a tool. We have a a piece of content, but what to use that for? That's one thing that I think we can dive into a bit. The second is, then there's this dream of a movement. And suddenly it exploded, right? It went from, I have a book. And I thought, okay, interesting. Let's talk about that too. And I also want to create a global movement of storytellers. Okay. Also interesting, but uh, can be combined, but definitely different dreams and different, shall we say, approaches. Mm -hmm. And the third is, which I really like, was you said, it doesn't have to make money. And that I'm assuming is because while I'm sure you wouldn't mind if this paid for your rent and, and so on, but it, it doesn't have to because you have a day job. And that means you don't have to do this for the money, even though it wouldn't hurt to get some. And that, of course, changes the picture again. So I think first question is, where do you want to start? Do we start talking about the movement or do we start talking about the book? First of all, you make a, a, a good point. Of, <laughs> now I made a pictures book. Uh, well, um, to in my defense... <laughs> uh, kind of thing um it's pictures of the forest so i mean like when you talk about people telling stories like i don't know um, move in a like um how do you say uh schauspieler um actors actors yes they need to get into character yeah so uh, i always pictured the people who want to tell a story they need to picture these uh these sceneries and um to yeah, mm -hmm. kind of know a little bit of backstory to it. Um, so I, well, I thought, yeah, maybe some pictures of uh, of a forest would be nice. But you you um, let's start off with um, uh, with the with the books uh, because well that's like that's the that's the biggest leverage I have at the moment uh, of kind of distributing uh, this uh, this idea of summaries to tell stories right. And um, I thought of sending out like uh, posters uh, with like a little bit of advertisement and a QR code to like kindergartens and ask them if they want to hang it on their like blackboard. Got it. Yeah, so that would be like my analog way of <laughs> doing marketing. <laughs> yeah. And I think it is mainly for, for parents to, who have already children who have children in the right age. And then the, the thing is, it's not starting with a problem. You know, I, I'm, I'm working as a service designer and I know like I, normally you always have to start with a problem and then you can go in exploration and then, I don't know, you find a new solution. Go on. It has not really like this deep problem people have. You know? um, it's like there are other solutions I'm competing with basically you can always just take a book from the bookshelf and just read it. Uh, and it's uh, and it's also easier to do, you know. But once you feel this magic of telling a story, then you get kind of addicted. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's not just you. Also possible, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need people to first, like, experience it just one time. Yeah. And then from there, you're basically hooked. Especially because you have a retention machine. Like my daughter, she is coming. She's now ten years old, and um, I started writing on a on a different story for her age, uh, uh, with like people from the Stone Age. Impressive. And she's coming to me every now and then, st still, and asking me to tell her like stories. So kind of, I, I started something with, within her, which is keeping me on this hook as well. So maybe there is something like how like to to kind of get people to experience this one time, mm -hmm. and then from there their journey starts, you know, and they can dive into this world of uh, connection, yeah, as well. So there are a couple of things here. Now, now we're hitting some good stuff, right? Because I think there, there are two things here I immediately thought of. And one is, and I, I want to unpack both of them. One is about books and how to use books. But let's wait for a moment with that and instead focus on the first one, which is from what I hear at first, I thought, okay, so Matisse has created these short kind of summaries of stories, essentially but like an inspiration book that they start with this and then they can fill out the blanks and there are plenty of blanks for them, but it gives like a, a skeleton, so to speak. It gives a, 
the basic structure that makes it easier to not have to start with a blank page. And that can be super useful. Mm -hmm. And then the more you said, the more I realized what you are doing, you're not selling the stories or the book is not the stories. The book is a tool that helps people to become storytellers. And your your kind of what success looks like is not that somebody gets inspired by your world and wants to hear more of it. It's that they throw away the book and then they tell their own stories and write their own book. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, like I, it even it even has like little like storytelling techniques inside. You know, like like little excerpts where you can learn a little bit more about telling tales and stories. So that's the first thing to do. The first thing to do is whenever you talk about it from now on, I would encourage you to talk less about the stories and more about making people into storytellers. Because now you have a problem. Why is not every parent a storyteller for their children? Even I, I'm an, an excellent storyteller, if I say so myself. However, I don't tell Saga stories. And she's often asking for them. And there are a couple of reasons for this. One reason is that often she'll ask for a story. She she has a, at the moment, she has a fascination. My six-year-old daughter has a fascination with what me and her mother, what our childhoods were like. So she's like, tell, tell me about your childhood. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we'll start with something, she'll, 20 seconds, she'll break off and turn into a side story of her own or get distracted. She, she thinks she wants to, she doesn't really. But that's one thing. The other thing is that when she says, tell me a story, that's a blank page. Where if I said, I'm going to today tell you the story of the night and the night, and then there's an ongoing story. That's what you've done with your, with your, with your stories, right? You've created, you've created a universe, mm -hmm. but it started with one story. And by having that structure, that rough universe, that this is what happens next time. And here's where they reference back to when they met the evil wizard or they help the deer or whatever it is by having that it's easier to tell the next story where the blank page is terrifying and it's terrifying enough to, to people who know, but it's even more terrifying to people who are not comfortable telling stories. The nice thing about books is you don't have to think, you just have to perform. If I pick up a book, I happily read to her, but that's different because I don't have to think, I just have to do. And I think if what we're saying, the problem here is how do we turn parents into storytellers and your book is a way of doing that because what it does is it gives them their first story universe and it doesn't give them the whole thing like a book. They're not just reading the Lord of the Rings to their kids or Star Wars novels or whatever. They have to do some of the work themselves, but you're giving them the ingredients and you're telling this is what happens next. And here you have to think of something to say. It doesn't tell the joke. It says, now there's a joke. You make up the joke, right? Essentially. And that means that it's training parents to become storytellers by giving them like support wheels on their bike. And suddenly the project has a very clear need and a very clear problem, which is how do you turn parents into storytellers that want, not only want to tell stories to their kids, but actually can and do? Because we don't need to ask, how do you make kids want to hear your stories? Generally they do. And yes, you're competing in a world of YouTube and highly produced television and online games and nice toys and books and all. You're competing with Harry Potter. Right. So writing a book that's better than Harry Potter, that's hard. Now telling a story that's more personal, that's a wholly different thing. And you're giving them a halfway tool, which is the skeleton. So anyone can take your book and it's not Harry Potter. It's not, it's not a classic novel. They're not just reading somebody else's story, but they're getting the skeleton. If J.K. Rowling had done this instead, then what she would have done would she would have made story summaries and say, a wizard and his friends are looking for how to do things at their new class or whatever. And then there are a bit, little bit of points, and then they would fill in the blanks. And suddenly, instead of everybody reading Harry Potter, they would be telling wizard stories. Is this, am, am I understanding it correctly? Yeah, that would be like, that. that's that's the vision, right? So I'm not a professional author and uh, the story, like the story summaries, which I wrote, they are probably kind of like slightly bumpy, I would say. Okay. 
but um, that's that's exactly the point. I mean, uh, I just want to give like the skeleton, and then you can go and tell the story yourself. And um, I really like the idea of like, I'm, I don't want to like promote the book, but rather like to like this this to frame it that way, training parents right. to be a storyteller. Like everybody can be a storyteller. That's the path, right? To kind of give them the leverage or like the, the, the tools to actually do it. So here's where we can make a jump into something that I've used for actual storytelling training. Mm -hmm. So I've trained consultants, I've trained business people, I've trained teachers, I've trained a bunch of different professional groups in how to do storytelling professionally. And one of the things I normally do with them as part of the training, whatever that looks like, is they get a task. And that task is a very simple advertising task. I ask them to sell London, to sell the city of London, not to sell it. One group once uh, said, we'll sell it to the French. <laughs> But, but more like sell it. And the nice thing about London, as an example, is that you can sell London as a tourist destination. You can sell it as education. You can sell it as food. You can sell it as business. You can sell it to a lot of people. Do you want to move there? Do you want to study there? Do you want to travel there? Do you want to be aware of it in the ecosystem? Do you want to be inspired by it? There are many ways to sell London. But if you get told sell London, then people who say, oh, I'm not creative, immediately get creative because... How are you going to sell it? How are you going to tell it? What is, and here you're saying, tell the story of the three dwarves and how they helped the deer that was stuck in the ice. So you're helping them by giving them that, that training, right? That instead of saying, sell London, you're saying, tell this story. And the nice thing about that, because when I do it with London, a lot of them come out afterwards, even after that, even if it's a 10 minute or 15 minute exercise in groups, they say, wow. I was surprised at how well this worked once we got going. And you're aiming for that exact same feeling of some parent somewhere in Dusseldorf or Rio de Janeiro or Shanghai <laughs> picks up your book, not to read the stories in it, but to tell their own stories based on that simple skeleton. And then out there, the hope is that there will be someday millions of versions of the three dwarves and how they help get the deer out of the ice. And they'll all be individual, and they'll all be the first ones told to that kid, and they'll be using the book. And the best success you can have is said is that afterwards, when they stop opening the book and just start telling their own stories, that's for you success is when you close the book and say, I don't need it anymore. Absolutely. Now, that's a dream, right? It is. And that is a clear problem. That suddenly we're, we're not in like, this is a small thing. We're saying, give them a tool to connect with their children in a way that parents have done for thousands of years. Parents have told stories to their kids for many, many, many years. This was how you, information was communicated, right? Yeah, absolutely. Before writing, before you had to actually tell them things. And we learn as humans, we learn better in story formats. So you're saying we are losing our ability as storytellers. We as parents are getting worse at telling stories. And we want to take the ancient art of storytelling from parent to child. We want to rekindle that fire. And that's what I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I've realized that just making people storytellers better, you can do that in many ways. But one of the best ways you can do it, one of the simplest ways, is by giving them the simple skeletons and getting them to add their own meat to the, to the bones. And once they've done that a certain number of times, they stop needing the skeleton and then they are ready. I mean, there, there, there are like two things. Uh, one is, as I said, my my writing is probably not as good as it should be <laughs> for it to to sell like million co copies or to even justify it but that's maybe there comes the dream of like having uh, all these other authors uh, uh, to uh, also write these kind of skeletons which people can use like people who are skilled in actually writing stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then there comes this idea of this movement of like uh, like creating this own genre of um, it, it's not like written written tales fully fleshed, but and then it's not just but and then there is um, this, the second thing is you you just said it you know like we are losing the ability of storytelling and we did it for 
thousands and millions of years. Uh, and it's an essential skill everybody should have. It's not, and it, it's, it's first of all, also for, for us adults, it's so beneficial to, to have this possibility of imagination. You know, basically storytelling is nothing else than imagining something. And it gives us the resilience of, uh, if you are in a bad place, to imagine a future where things can be brighter and better, for example, right? And then it gives you the motivation and inspiration to actually seek this different kind of future you, you imagined. And it also, like, I mean, it, it, it's helping everywhere in the workplace as well. I mean, since I started telling tales or telling stories, uh, and like building this muscle of, uh, of of skill, it helped me create better results in my work because obviously everything it gets under more understandable and more uh, like people can connect to connect to a story way better than they can connect to like an Excel sheet. You know, like ha have a look. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about that. Everybody is searching for this story, which is behind the numbers or behind the PowerPoint slide you you just created. Probably everybody knows from like a pitch deck from a startup. It's also kind of a storyline you're telling there. You know? um, this is the problem, and uh, this is the I don't know the exploration we did, and and we came to this conclusion, and we created this solution out of it, and boom, there we are. We found like the holy grail. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, I lie. <laughs> it's all over the place <laughs> in my head, and um, let's make it less all over the place. Nice. Let's sharpen the story. Yes. Because I see two clear things here. One is the first one. This is a way for you to connect with your kids yes. in a meaningful way that they will enjoy and you will enjoy. And for those who dislike screens, there's no screens involved. Right. And once you have once you have tasted tasted the sweet juice of storytelling and you've gotten to a point where you're comfortable first with using the help, the help of the book, and then later graduating from that and closing the book and giving it to somebody else, that is one part of it. That's a very, very meaningful part where if somebody comes to you and says, as a parent, here's how you can connect to your kids meaningfully. And the second part, it has a secondary effect. It will make you a better storyteller professionally. And storytelling, if you look at what are essential skills for the modern workplace, you'll find that storytelling ranks quite highly on a lot of these lists. Right now, it's being overshadowed by AI. But let's be fair, everything is overshadowed by AR. But the ability to tell compelling stories is something that no matter if whether you're a plumber or a lawyer or you work at Disney, which has, by the way, both plumbers and lawyers, right? <laughs> then storytelling is a pretty useful skill. So what we have here is that you have created something that helps people connect with their kids in a meaningful way. And it's the training wheels on their journey to become storytellers. And the second part is it also has a professional benefit. So if these are the two, these are the two stories you tell, mm -hmm. right? Keep that straight would be my advice. Keep that straight on track because these are two powerful stories, two powerful arguments to be made in favor of what you're doing. You're saying a book, it doesn't do it. A book is great, but a book doesn't do this. A film doesn't do this. And if you just give people a blank piece of paper and say, make up a story, then it's very, very hard. You are creating training wheels for parent storytellers to engage with their kids and it has a professional benefit. I'd say that's a pretty powerful story. Nice, yeah. Now, if we take that and we park it for a moment, we say, okay, that has clarity. That can be told and retold in a good way. Then we look at the other thing, which is the book format. How do you use the book? You now have a book. How many do we print? Where do we go with them? Do we sell? Do we market? So let's talk about books for a minute. Mm -hmm. And books have an interesting thing to them. Now, I have 45 to my name, so I know a little bit about both how to produce them, but also how to use books. And one of the thing about books is that books are terribly hard to sell, but they're great gifts. Mm -hmm. And a book has an advantage that few other things that, that a lot of kind of short form content doesn't have, that a book is its own excuse. So if you imagine that, like, if we don't know each other that well, and we've just met at a conference, and then I write Monday after, and I write, hey, Matthias, it was great meeting you. 
I'd like to stay connected with you. Say, yeah, it was interesting. Let's stay connected. And then on Tuesday, you get a mail where I write, hey, Matthias, here are my 16 tips on how to close a safe. And you're like, okay, well, I don't know where that came from, but I guess I'll read some of them. And number four was quite nice and then move on. And then the day after I send you, hey, Matthias, here's my eight recipes for how to navigate a networking event. And you're like, what, what's going on with this guy? And unless I'm really lucky and I really hit like spot on, you might be like, where has this person been all my life? I can't wait to get the next mail. Mm -hmm. But unless I'm lucky, then probably you're going to get pretty annoyed at some point and just block my mails or at least say, Klaus, what, what you're sending me like a, a chapter a day of your thoughts, like what's going on here? But if I took the same mails and I didn't send them to you, but I collected them for 100 days, the same ones I were going to send you. And then I took them and I turned them into a book called 100 Tips for the Aspiring Business Person of 2024. And I printed it out and I got it and it was layouted and nice. And maybe there's even a photographer with pictures of trees, right? <laughs> Something nice. And it's hardcover and it's, mm, it's nice. And then I open up that book and I write, Dear Matthias, it was so nice meeting you at the conference. Here's a little gift. And then I send it to you in the mail. And when you unpack that, you're not going to see 100 mails of annoyance. You're going to say, wow, this guy gave me a book. What an incredible present. What an amazing guy. Even if you open it and think, okay, 16 tips for sales. Well, I like number four. And then eight tips for networking. Okay, I'll skip to the next one. Even if the content is exactly the same, the fact that it's delivered in a package that has a book format makes it its own excuse. And that means I can take a book any book, and I can send it to a random person, especially if there's a little bit of a reason. Right? It's not just completely random, but somebody I met or somebody I talked to. And I send it with a small note that says, hey, Matthias, uh, here's a gift for you. It was nice meeting you. I thought you might find this interesting. And maybe you're going to think, this guy, Klaus, it's just some marketing stunt. <laughs> What the hell is wrong with him? I burn his book and I spit on his LinkedIn. <laughs> you might do that. But odds are better that you would at least open it and say, wow, this is cool, and flip through it and say, oh, does it feel serious? And is it nice photographs of trees? And is the layout, does it seem serious? And like, oh, okay. And then you'll put it up on your shelf. And maybe you'll never take it down again. But maybe you will. Maybe one day you're sitting there thinking, okay, I could use some fresh inspiration. That book I got from that guy at the conference three years ago, let me take a look at that. Because a book is its own excuse where a blog post or a short video, YouTube video, or a, an email, that's pushy. You send me a TikTok video of you, I'm going to feel that's pushy. You send me a book you wrote, I'm going to be grateful, even if the book is a, exactly the content of 100 TikTok videos. Now, the tricky thing there is that books cost money to produce, and it, it's not as powerful if you send it digitally. It still has power, but it's not as powerful. Sending somebody an ebook, yes, there's something there, but it's not the same. But a physical book, giving somebody a physical book taps into a past where that had value. And a lot of us have that, we feel that in our bones. It's in our skeletons, right? That if somebody comes with that, and that means if you give it to, let's say you go to a kindergarten and you say, you know what? I'm on this quest to turn parents into storytellers. Here's my story. And I've created this book and I'd like to give you 50 copies of my book. And I'd like you to give one to each of the parents. Now, maybe they'll say, we are not allowed to do that due to the law, or we've already gotten 18 free books from different authors who want to tap into our, our parent community. So what's, what's wrong with you? But probably not. Probably they'll say, wow, that's amazing. We Oh, that mission of storytellers, that's beautiful. We want to do that. We want to help. And all we have to do is give out books to, wow. And if they're not allowed to do that, if you just send them a book and say, hey, I've, here's three books for your kindergarten. My mission is to turn adults into storytellers. And this is how it's done. And this is why I do it this way. And this is the framework. Then most of them will be very happy with that gift. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's, uh, I, I, I love this part of like, like uh, going in and having something uh, in your hand and then uh, going to the kindergarten and then you ignite kind of this, I don't know, this domino effect kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it's also like from your uh, from your talk with uh, Neil Shambra Stevens, it's like the hyper specific audience mm -hmm. uh, kind of you have like the kindergarten, but not the parents of the kindergarten, but it's rather like the kindergarten itself. 
from there it starts kind of uh, making bigger waves uh, around in the kindergarten then, right? Yeah, something like that. And you could even do, let's say we take that, by the way, Matthias is referencing episode number five, just in case anybody is curious <laughs> enough about that. Let's plug the podcast on the podcast. <laughs> but let's say we take this idea a little bit further. It might be too far, but just, just for a moment, right? Let's say we produce a thousand books, mm -hmm. a thousand books, and it's a special edition of it, whether it's sold elsewhere, it doesn't matter, but we're producing a thousand and either you're paying for them or we're finding somebody to pay for them. But right now we have a thousand books. And in those thousand books, it starts by saying, this book is a gift. The reason you're opening this book is because somebody gave it to you. And at the end, it says, if you want to give the book to somebody else, you cannot buy this book for yourself, but you can buy it as a book for somebody, mm -hmm. as a gift for somebody. If you want to give this book as a gift or give a book like this as a gift to somebody else, go to this web page and you can order it here. Mm -hmm. Because now you're saying this is not a book you buy. This is a book you buy as a gift. I love that idea. This is a book that you get for Christmas or you get for a birthday because you're not buying it for yourself. You're buying it for your friend who has kids or your sister, whoever else it is, right? You're buying it for that parent who you think, ah, oh, they would, they, this might help them become a better storyteller and they would enjoy that because it makes for a lovely gift. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the, the idea of these hero journeys, right? So you kind of, if you bring the uh, bring the book to somebody as a gift, then it is entering their lives and sending them on like a hero journey from there onwards. Right? Bingo. Yeah, I love that idea. And we could even take it one step further. <laughs> I love that and say you write in the book in the beginning where you write this is how you use the book and and say my hope is that at some point especially if you're inexperienced you will start out thinking okay this is weird and this is strange and the story summaries the story frameworks here the simple story outlines are here to help you and you will find as you progress more and more through the book you will need the book less and less and the moment where I am happiest as the creator of this is when you put down this book and say, I don't need the book anymore. And I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to, at that moment, give the book to somebody else. Oh, I love that. Because now you're creating a movement where part of the your central tool, which is your book, it has an instruction to grow the movement. Not for money, because you're not doing this for money. But you would like a book. The best thing that could happen is that one book gets read by a thousand different parents and a thousand different parents kind of graduate from that inexperienced storyteller needing the training wheels to saying, I don't need this book anymore. And then they give it on to somebody new, right? That would make you incredibly happy because you don't want them to go down and buy a thousand copies of your book. You want the book to reach a thousand people. I just love that because I mean, that's uh, essentially also uh, with this um, analog thing of a book, that's the great thing you can do. Just give it to somebody else and it can be read again and read again and used again and used again uh, until you learned what's in it. And then it kind of has its own journey beginning, right? Every book has its own journey. Uh, of going from one person to another to another, experiencing a, a lot of different things <laughs> on the on the on the journey. And that leads us to thank you for that. And that leads us to that now we have a plan. Nice. There's a clear vision. There's a clear mission, and there's a clear way of getting it started. Now you need two things, and one is easier to find than the other. <laughs> the first is you need some people to give some books to. Mm -hmm. whether they're libraries or their parents or some of the people who've read some of these already would be great ones to start with, the ones on your newsletter. So that's the first thing. You need some people to give these books. And the second is you need somebody to pay for the books because you probably have some money, right? You could probably easily throw 500 euros at this. And that buys you the first couple of hundred books. Mm -hmm. And if you have them and you take them to somebody, whether it's a foundation or it's a company or it's a it's an organization, something like that, and you say, this is my mission and this is how I do it. And it means that once I get a storybook out there, a training set of training wheels out there, it can travel between people. But I need some help with financing because I've paid for these out of my own pocket, whether it's 200 books or 500 books or 10,000 books, mm -hmm. depends on how much money you just have lying around, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> I will not tell. <laughs> Probably not 10,000 to start with. But once you have that and you show that, then it's just about finding somebody who says, I like that idea. I want to support that mission. Sure, my company will support it. Just throw us on the cover. Okay, I'm happy to do that. This one is presented by Siemens, right? Or brought to you by BMW. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that when, when TED, the TED Talk started getting really popular, they got BMW to sponsor them. In the beginning of every video, it says BMW powering ideas, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And BMW paid for that because they wanted to support the mission and be seen supporting the mission. And once you have a mission that's powerful, you have that. This is powerful stuff, it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> and once you've demonstrated that all it needs is the money to produce some books, and then you'll get them into hands, and the hands will get them into new hands, and then a couple of success stories along the way by somebody saying, wow, I used the book, not for firewood, but for really becoming a storyteller, all the good stuff. <laughs> right? You already have some of it. Then it just needs somebody to say, huh, okay, this guy's on a mission. Mm -hmm. He's got a way to do it. All I need to do is throw in some money and I can be part of that mission. And if I do it early, I might even be a central part of that mission. That's not a hard sell talking sponsorships, especially because you don't need a lot, right? 500 books can be paid for by a couple of hundred euros, yeah. maybe a thousand euros, and then you're off to the races. And that, then you just do it again. Nice. It'll be easier to recruit the ones for volume two, which is where you invite in co-authors and you invite in authors and that sort of thing and say, here's the mission. Here's how it went with the first one. Now I'd like you to invite me in. And then it's not 180 stories from you. Then it's 180 stories from 180 authors or from 10 different or whatever it looks like. Right. Yeah. And you then have a model. Plus, this is going to bring in the potential, whether you take it or not, for speaking gigs for people who would like to hear how to do more, people who would like your help. So it will also bring in the potential for some side income. And in all of this, we've never sold a single book. Wow. I really love that. Thank you. I really love that. I think it's an awesome idea. I think you're onto something amazing. And I'm happy if I can help shape it just a little bit. This is my way of not getting my name anywhere on it, but at least feeling that I've been involved. <laughs> and Matthias, as we round off here, I want you to do one thing, and then I want to do one thing first. And the thing I want to do first is the same as I've done in the other episodes, is I want you to thank you for bringing this to me, mm -hmm. sharing it not just with me, but with the world. And that takes courage, even if it's a good story. So thank you for that. <laughs> The second part is I want you to think for a moment and think of three things you take with you from our session here. Yes. Three takeaways, three things you're going to either do or think or disagree with. That's also okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I think it just brought the project like really far ahead. I don't know if my English is right, but like it really accelerated uh accelerated the project so thank you so much for uh for all of your thoughts and uh and yeah all, all, all your all of your brain power and uh to come to your second question um or second second point um three points of what i learned so the, the first of all focusing on this idea of creating like creating but like turn parents into storytellers and training parents to be these uh yeah to 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 enable them to be there like to be very good storytellers that's that's like the the first one it's like that's really powerful and uh, the second uh, thing, like the realization of uh, that we are losing our ability of storytelling, right? It's, and that we kind of relearn, that we have to relearn and we uh, gain the power uh, uh, and the ability of storytelling. And the third one is like this radical idea of not selling the books, <laughs> but rather having the books as a gift, which, which start their own journey and kind of touch as many lives uh, as possible. And I, I really love that I'm now having this mission and to the vision and uh, I can just go and I'm feeling so actionable, which is super nice. Thank you for that. And 
Thank you to all of you out there who've been listening in. We hope you take something out of this as well. If not anything else, then at least uh, get hold of uh, one of these Matthias's books when they're out, whatever format they end up in. <laughs> and yeah, that got to be a little bit of a long pause. I actually just wanted to say the last thing, which is, which is thank you. This has been the Innovation Coaching Podcast. You've heard Matthias Geimer and me, your host, Klaus Wasten. Thank you for listening.